Assalamu alaikum guys um, Very bored so I thought I'd check in See how everyone is doing uh, I'm just in Coventry at the moment um, So yeah, what's going on? Um, I wanted to take a chance to do this video as well Just to, you know, for the last time address I'm not really going to do any videos about the TV show again uh, But yeah um, I want to, you know, on the show I had um, there's a little thing I said that was very popular called um a little phrase that I um, became more popular than expected where I said when in doubt don't be a dick now I've, I've been quiet about a couple of things now before the show started uh, a lot of people were very critical of the show and, and what the show was gonna do now I wanna give you guys a, a little it's one of the reasons why I am proud to be a Muslim right when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was kicked out of Mecca he was sent to Medina. So those of you who are non-Muslim, um, the mu early Muslims got kicked out of uh, Mecca and sent to Medina uh, because obviously, uh, I'll answer your question, AK. Well, I'm going to finish the story first because I think it's very important for people to understand this because too many people have negative attitudes in our community. Right? So uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and his companions were kicked out of Mecca because they, they, they taught that all men were equal and that all human beings were equal. And the first followers of Islam were women and the wretched in society, the slaves and so on. Yeah. So they got kicked to Medina. Muslims got sent to Medina by pagans because the pagans did not like the fact that they couldn't profit from slavery. Because Muslims, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, taught people that sla human beings were meant to be on equal footing and all men were born equal all women were born equal except uh what is in their heart so your piety is what sets you up now the first place the muslims went to was a neighboring country called abyssinia which is basically uh east africa well most of saudi arabia is east africa as far as i'm concerned but um that's a debate for another day but yeah the muslims went to abyssinia to the negus or najasi at that time and they were protected by Christians and eventually the Muslims fled to a place called Medina to Nabi, which is the city of the Prophet in English. Um, and even there, Muslims were tortured and Muslims were attacked. They had embargoes placed on them and Muslims died of starvation and sickness because they didn't get enough food and drink to survive. Now, this is one of the things that I think has remained consistent in Islam. Muslims may be weak, but Islam is strong and I'll show you how. As if it wasn't enough for, for people to place embargoes so that Muslims couldn't get medicine and food and water, right? The, the, the pagans from Mecca then attacked Medina. They con continuously attacked Medina again and again and again. I believe, what, 31 or 30 attacks, 30 wars? And the Muslims, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fought about 29 of these wars. Now, Muslims would be outnumbered 10 to 1, 9 to 1 three to one and the more they attacked the muslims the stronger the muslims grew the more people who hate muslims attacked the muslims the stronger they grew to the point where neighboring tribes started joining the muslims because they thought surely these people must be with god these people must be with god because every time we attack them they get stronger now let's fast forward by the way these people most of the wars happened during ramadan when muslims were tired hungry and weak but the muslims always won except for the one time the muslims lost yeah when khalid ibn khalid khalid ibn walid led an army and the prophet Muhammad was blindsided right and then the only person to ever defeat muslims became a muslim himself and went on to be known as the sword of islam right Sorry, I'm not a sheikh, so, you know, forgive me if you don't like my storytelling method when it comes to Islam. But this um, this pattern has remained the same in the history of Islam up until modern times. You look at the Crusades. Muslims have been divided into Sunni and Shia. We disagree. The Crusaders came into Palestine when Muslims were completely divided. They slaughtered Muslims. They slaughtered Christians. They slaughtered Jews. What did that do? It united Muslims. Muslims came together and they kicked the Crusaders out. You look at the Mongols, the Mongols came and wiped out Muslims, wiped them out and drank wine from their skulls. Then they read the Quran and they became Muslim. You look at 9-11, which led to, you know, the, 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 the um, war on terror, which led to a lot of anti-Muslim rhetoric. What happens? 
are skyrocketing the amount of people who take shahada and the places where people take took shahada the most in america were the places where people hated muslims the most texas and the group of people who were becoming muslim the quickest were the group of people that everyone assumed would be least interested in islam white women because obviously islam is supposed to be this misogynistic faith so what i'm saying is this people think oh my god um muslims went on tv and they're going to embarrass themselves now Let's, let me let me make this clear. I know one of the producers of the show. Sorry, I just had a call mid. Uh, but yeah, Muslims, like I was saying, um, I lost my train of thought. Muslims have constantly, constantly been attacked. And every time we're attacked, we benefit. Now, I know one of the producers of the show and he had genuine um, interest. But you have to understand the way media works. Okay, people are saying, oh, we don't like this Muslim and that Muslim. They're not going to put Zakir Naik, Abdurrahim Green, and Al Jamaiki on the same TV show. You know, they're not going to get a bunch of alims. You know why? Because most Muslims are not alims. That's the truth. You guys want to see the Sahaba on TV representing Muslims, but you're not the Sahaba yourselves. Out of the people, do the rulers come? Out of the people, do your representatives come? And honestly, who can say that they don't know anybody? on the TV show that's like one of us. Be honest, how many of you are the examples you would like to see on TV? So when you guys say, oh, the, um, when you guys complain about the kind of Muslims you see representing you in the media, ask yourself, what kind of Muslim are you? You know, people, I think Muslims want a perfect society and they want to see Islam flourish without making Islam flourish in their own lives and their own hearts first, you know? So you've got people complaining that, oh, this, this, these Muslims are not the right kind of Muslims. No Muslim is the right kind of Muslim. There will always be somebody who has a weakness and a failing. The TV program was meant to show us as we truly are. The TV program was meant to show us as humans. Flawed, but good, right? Now, I'm not going to pretend that I liked everybody on the show because I didn't. I did not. But even the worst examples of Muslims on that show, I'm sure probably had some good qualities about them. Now, as much as you guys want to call the show a circus, let's be realistic. When have you ever watched TV and everybody on TV was perfect? It had to be entertaining. If it was a bunch of perfect Muslims on the show, nobody would have watched it. Nobody would have watched it. But, you know, it was entertaining. That is why people watched it. And it's the same thing when people complain about people like me, who, for example, did stand-up comedy. You know? You, 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 you don't you don't like the fact that I do comedy, but alhamdulillah, I'm with Imran Yusuf, I'm with Tess Ilyas, I'm with Amir Rahman, I'm with Mo, uh, I'm, I'm with Mo, 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 Mo Amer from America, you know, I'm with all these guys, I'm with Guzi Khan right now, we're doing a comedy tour, and so far we've helped raise over £200,000 for Syria. What have you done sitting down in your house dissing us? What have you done? I'm not even putting you on the spot. I'm being genuine. Like, if you want to hate man, hate man. And if you want to don't, if you want to dislike us, go ahead. But at least show me what you are doing that is better. Because that's the problem we have in the Muslim community. We're quick to label things as haram. We're quick to label things as makhru. We're quick to condemn people, right? We're quick to call people extreme and say that they're, 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 they're pushing ghulu. But when we say these things, we don't offer an alternative. We're quick to tell our children, don't watch that, it's haram. But what halal thing do you do to re replace, what, what thing do you replace for your children? What thing do you do when you take away something that your child enjoys that you believe is haram? What halal do you give them? Nothing. We're too quick to condemn and will not offer solutions. Half the people on there who complain about the TV show complain because they thought the show was bad. Well, my inbox, you know, has been full of non-Muslims approaching us, asking me for explanations of islam because they live in parts of the uk where there are no muslims had we not done this tv show i'm not saying they wouldn't have seen muslims but the fact is allah has used that avenue to reach somebody and that's the thing i'm saying even if and this tv this tv show was not an attack on muslims you guys need to understand how television works okay it was not an attack on muslims it was an entertaining show in which some positives were hidden that's the way you have to look at it so you complain about comedy because we're not standing on stage giving a khutbah. Well, it's comedy. But even through comedy, yeah, even through comedy, we we educate people. The same thing through reality TV. Whatever avenue, Allah has put me in a position where, look, I'm not a scholar, but I'm in a position where I can influence people in my own way. And I do the best I can with my means and my talent and my personality to influence people how I can. Now, instead of sitting down at home complaining, why don't you get off your ass and do something? You know, if you're a Hafiz of Quran, that's brilliant. But what good is it if it's only the Quran doesn't go further than your house? 
It doesn't go further than your roof. You are an alim. You have knowledge of deen. MashaAllah, tabarakAllah. You know Islam very well. But your Islam is just in your house. Or better still, you know Islam very well. But you only use Islam as a means to condemn people who aren't like you. What's the point of your Islam? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was not sent to righteous people. The Arabs were the worst of people. So you guys are complaining that, oh, I was in a house with a gay guy and so on that drinks. Yes! You're goddamn right I was. You guys are more offended about the fact that there was a gay guy on TV. But you've got family members who commit shirk. Shirk is worse. You've got people in your family that commit shirk. You don't say anything. <coughs> but you want to complain because you've seen a guy who's gay. I'm not saying I condone it. But let's be real. Let's be real. That gay guy isn't pushing people away from Islam. Muslims like you are. That's the truth. So, you know, I'm just trying to say, instead of being negative, like any other community, if, 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 if it was a Hindu program and there was a non-practicing Hindu but still did something to promote Hinduism, Hindus would be happy. If there was a non-practicing Sikh who, who didn't take Amrit, who, who isn't wearing a turban and whatnot, and he did something good for Sikhism, Sikhs would be like, okay, well, at least he's promoting Khalsa, at least he's promoting Sikhism in his own way. <coughs> but when we have a Muslim, a Muslim could heal the sick. A Muslim could find the cure for cancer. And other Muslims would criticize him because his trousers aren't folded up high enough. <coughs> Shame on you guys. Yeah? So, criticize the comedy. But if you've got a way that you can raise 200 or 300 grand, for Syria and Palestine, within a month, I'd like to I'd like to hear your suggestions. Criticize Islam, but at the end of the day, uh, criticize us for going on this TV show. At the end of the day, somebody in Ireland contacted me who's never met a Muslim in his life, born into a Catholic family. He wants to know more about Islam. Now, if only he, if he alone is the only person that benefited from that program, I still say, you know what? If I was asked to do that program again, I would do it again. If it means only one person, one person looks into Islam, <coughs> even if he doesn't become a Muslim, just for the fact that there's one other person, because Allah says, even if you only know one ayah, you go out and you preach, you go out and you talk to people about his religion. So, wallahi billah, I'm telling you now, if I, if I got given opportunity to do it again, and they put me in a house with nine homosexuals and eight racists, yeah? So be it. If I know that I will be given a chance to speak about Islam and I, people who have never heard about Islam will hear it, I will hear it. If the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa could endure abuse and have rubbish thrown at him and stones thrown at him and be thrown into battle, then why will I refuse to go into a house simply because did people not slander the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he was preaching? They slandered him. He still went out and preached. And eventually the good that he said came to people so why am i gonna refuse to go on tv because i might be slandered yes i was slandered. well i wasn't slandered out people took the wrong idea and there's another thing you guys are watching a tv show <coughs> or you see even you muslims even you muslims are supposed to know better forget about the non-muslims you watch the tv show look at the the footage that was on the show you see us you see i convinced a whole group of people to go out and feed the poor in the name of islam but you're all getting at me because I lost my temper supposedly over some onions. It wasn't just that. But even if it was just onions that made me angry, can't you overlook that because I did good on the show and I influenced other people to do good? No, you look for the first opportunity to tear down a brother. And then tomorrow when there's no Muslims on TV and nobody's represented at all, the same people complaining will say that there's nothing. Honestly, as a community, you guys need to fix up. And, you know, if you're not doing anything for the community, if you're not doing anything that benefits Islam, then shut up. And that's not me being rude. That's the truth, because you make us look foolish. You know, the Prophet, exactly, there's a, look at the Sikh brother even saying, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set a great example for us to live. And another thing is this, how often, if you look at the way the Prophet Muhammad lived his life, yeah, and I'm not comparing myself to him, I'm just saying, he didn't spend all his time just preaching to people. He set an example by how he lived. When people ask Aisha, how did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do this and that? She never says, oh, he used to say. Do you know? She, she, she would say, look, he did this and he did that. We know him by his actions. He was a doing man. He was an action man. Yeah, our Prophet was an action man. Are you an action person or are you just on Facebook sharing memes are you just on facebook sharing articles thinking that you're changing the world 
I'll tell you something, you're not. Oh, as with well, boy, I don't know. I mean, he's married. Allahu alam is haram to suspect, but yeah, quite a few people think that he was that way inclined based on the TV show. But you know, you never know. He might have just been doing it for the camera. Some guys, you know, some guys are very comfortable with their sexuality and they crack jokes like that, you know? Peace from the quad. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, um, that's what I'm saying now. So I think Muslims need to stop being reactive and be more proactive. You need to get up and go out there and do something, you know? At the end of the day, um, I'm, I, I utilized the opportunity that was given to me. Exactly. A man of Allah is always a man of action, you know? I don't think there's any prophet, you know, that lived his life just talking and didn't get up and do things. An important aspect of Islam is action. And not just action, action and intention. You know, so there's people who even they act, but then they do it for the camera. They do it for the name and whatnot. Honestly, I don't care if you guys hate me, but I want you to hate me for the right reason. Wa alaikum salam, bro. How you doing? You all right? Yeah. So if you're going to hate me, hate me for the truth, you know, but I just think it's, it's a very harmful thing that's killing our community. We're not active enough. We don't go out and do things. We just want to sit down and complain. We want to write letters to the BBC and complain. You know, we don't want to go out, you know, because at the end of the day, if Muslim media was that good, we wouldn't need to go on the BBC. But what mu there's very few Muslim media um, outlets that are <clears throat> credible. Alhamdulillah, the training has been good. I'm currently on tour right now, so I haven't been able to, um, I haven't been able to train as much as I want to. I dislocated my shoulder preparing for a grappling tournament a while back. And uh, obviously my Kali and Silat stuff, I still try and train. I didn't take my sticks with me for this tour, though, brother. You know, Abdul Azim, when are you in the UK, man? I wanna, you know, I wanna see you in that. But yeah, in, I don't think in the history of television on British TV there has ever been someone like me for that long on camera. I don't think it's ever happened. You know, I don't think, and this is not me bragging, but like, how many you guys say we weren't represented? Apart from the boys from Cage, how many people have you seen as real on me, as as real as me on TV, that were Muslim? <laughs> I'll check my WhatsApp, inshallah. <laughs> Sorry, man. You'll be there in six months? Say nothing, man. You're welcome to my house, man. When you come in, we'll have a nice Nigerian meal. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I'm gonna... Yeah, the Amir Khan impression of Abdul... Of, uh, the Abdul Haq impression of Amir Khan was hilarious. Now, there were, obviously, there was a lot of humor. And even that humor, all the jokes that were on the, the show... You know, it was a form of that as well. People need to see us Muslims laughing. People need to see us joke. People need to see us play with our kids. It's not always every day talking, talking. I mean, you know, there's, there's, um, there's, there's, there's plenty of videos and things of angry Muslims burning effigies in Pakistan and all over the world. Sometimes maybe it's nice for there to be a TV show showing quirky Muslims that like comic books and used to listen to Metallica. You know, so just I'm just trying to say you guys need to, you know not you guys on my page because you know people on my page are awesome, but if you could share this that would be great. People need to be more positive. Um, I've realized that I've been slacking when it comes to making videos and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna try and do these little live videos more often. Maybe I mean, what do you guys think? Once a week, twice a week, randomly like I've been doing so far. I mean, to be fair, I'm doing this right now because I'm bored. <clears throat> Nothing else matters. Sorry, that's for the non-Metallica fans. But yeah, you know, um, look how wavy I am, bro. Look at them waves. You can't really see them in this light, man. Wavy right now. Um, but yeah, um, people, we, we need to really understand how powerful Islam is. That posh dude. Hell, I don't even know. I, I didn't know people like that existed, man. I didn't even know, man. But yeah, people, Islam is a beautiful thing. Let me tell you a story. This is a story that I heard Zakir Naik telling someone. There were two shops opposite each other on the street. And one of them, Wa alaikum salam Shazia. So one of these shops sold uh, vinegar and the other shop sold candy. Right? Now, the shop that sold candy did not do well. The shop that sold vinegar did. And eventually, the shop that sold candy had to close down. So on the day... That the shop that sold candy was closing down, the man who owned the candy shop, who was generally quite a bitter, angry person anyway, went across the road to the person who sold vinegar. And he asked the person who sold vinegar, how can you sell vinegar 
and make more money than me that sells candy vinegar is disgusting it's sour it's bitter candy is sweet so how can i sell vinegar how can you sell vinegar and do better than me at business than a person that sells candy and the guy that sold vinegar said it's simple my friend i sell vinegar with a candy face you sell candy with a vinegar face deep story no what it is is you could have the best product in the world you could have the best religion in the world but if you as a person are not likable, if you as a person are not approachable, if you as a person are not positive, if you as a person are not someone that people can sit down and talk to and like, that product that you're pushing, it's not going to sell. That Islam that you've got is not going to sell. People aren't going to like it. Think about it. We watch TV shows about vampires and devils and demons and root for the devils and demons in these programs because they're marketed to look nice do you see what i'm saying we, you know i'm not gonna lie i watch vampire diary and i enjoy it. i watch arrow arrow is a murderer batman is a madman and a serial killer right these guys are crazy but the way they're the way they're shown the way that we're shown makes these people look great we watch programs like mickey mouse a mouse is the most disgusting animal to ever find in your house but our children are pepper pig Khenzil, pig can you imagine Alade, a pig yeah you you, you 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 would never want to see a pig in your house but i bet you if you've got children they love pepper pig why because of how they've been presented it's the same thing with islam you guys present islam as this angry cult this angry hateful and when i say you guys not you commenting but just in general we present islam as this angry hateful thing that can't be fun that can't be loving that can't be accepting and then you wonder why nobody wants islam you know and then it's like you want to show that the that the, the that Islam is united. You did a bad job at it when we when we got put on TV, you know. Because if if the Ummah was truly united, everybody would be happy. Oh look, there's Muslims on TV. Let's watch. But no, before the show was even on, people started complaining. Now look, I've had Alhamdulillah. Some people have turned around and said, you know what, we were wrong. There were some good representatives on the program. But for the most part, man, people. Just need to lighten up a bit and i don't mean bleach because bleach is bad stay dark black is beautiful so yeah ah oh, thank you Arda. i appreciate that exactly you know we never get represented on tv and like you know you guys should say alhamdulillah like i'm i you know we we did the job that some of you don't have to do so now by the way look how cool my t-shirt is bruv go on tell me my t-shirt's haram but yeah <clears throat> my wife got me that as well but yeah <laughs> but yeah you know pe people people as muslims will never be happy will never ever be happy you know one guy said there's not enough asians on tv on the program <laughs> six out of ten is not enough you know people said that i was too liberal in one episode the next episode they said that i was too um aggressive i was too this i was too that subhanallah man people will never people will never learn people will never be happy Anyway, yeah, please, um, going forward, try and be more positive. <laughs> sure you can. Try and be more positive. Try and contribute. Don't be a unit of consumption. Be a unit of production. Go out and do things. Remember that Islam is, is a religion of people who are productive and who did things and who acted upon things. Remember, even at the beginning of the show, I quoted a hadith. Yeah, Facebook Live is free mixing. <laughs> Some people are watching this now and getting pregnant. That's not full lot, big. My wife is watching this. Don't get me in trouble. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we've got um, flipping so many amazing examples of the Sahaba. And we just we just don't do it. There's so many interesting stories. There's so many interesting stories that we have. There's so many interesting philosophies. But um, people don't even know that about Islam. Why? Because we're too busy arguing with each other about random stuff. Oh, you need to fold this. Oh, you didn't use your miswak. I'm not saying these things are important, but come on, man. Not every day fights. Sometimes chill, you know? <sighs> anyway, what's going on, people? You good? In a short while, I'm going to be heading uh, to do my gig in Coventry. I uh, hope to see some of you there. Uh, in any case, uh, I'm going to head off now. Oh, Devante, you're just joining now. Exactly. 
I don't know about Abdul Haq being autistic. It's it's it might be possible. Who knows? You know what I mean? He's he is quite an eccentric character, but I make dua for him because believe it or not, when you sat down and talked to the guy one on one, he was actually a really cool guy. Um I think um what I wanna say is that um Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true, many Muslims always want to point out the haram someone is doing. You know why I think people do that? I think people like to overreact about things because it makes them feel more important. You know, people are at home and, you know, they've got a bullshit job. Their their wives aren't attracted to them anymore. Their kids don't respect them. They've got all these problems in their life, you know. And then they look at you and they think, you know what? I, I, I'm better than this guy because, you know, my beard is bigger than his. I'm better than this guy because I pray more often than he does. And most of the time, they might be wrong about that person. Like, for example, a lot of you don't know this. That sister on the program, uh, Mehreen, the one that had the long hair, that, you know, um, the, 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 the one with the dyed blonde hair, the young Asian girl, never missed a prayer. She prayed. She fasted. She just didn't dress. There's many sisters that wear the abaya, wear the hijab, even niqab, and don't pray salah. Do you know that when I was in that house, when I did the cleaning and all that in that house, you guys don't believe this. She was always there to make sure that I had a helping hand when I was cooking. That girl had more manners than most of the people in that house, but she wasn't a hijabi. The, the, I, there was a time I fell ill in the house. I, I was dehydrated. I was sick. They would, she, would make, she would make sure that somebody brought me tea or somebody brought me water. Do you see what I'm saying? So, you know, and she used to come and she, she used to sit down. She wouldn't mix with us. She'd sit on one side of the room, yeah, and listen to um, the Syrian brother read Quran and then ask him questions about the verses of Quran that he read. How many sisters that wear hijab do that? How many? You know, she said that, look, growing up, she wasn't taught these things. And now she's, she has an interest. She wants to learn. So many people will look at her and judge her because of how she dressed, but subhanallah look i'm not you can't you can't i can't tell you that she's not a practicing muslim mm. no the the blonde sister that did the yoga is the older one naila she was fruitier than fruitcake man she was fruitier nuttier than squirrel shit i'm not gonna lie like you know may allah guide her may allah guide her she's got a video calling me a savage by the way um <laughs> She doesn't like the fact that um, a lot of people think that she's racist. Why is it that racists never like being called racist? Surely it's something you'd be proud of. But yeah, you know, people need to be less judgmental because you could be wrong about someone. You could be very wrong. You know, a lot of people just saw the program, saw me, and just assumed I wasn't going to be practicing. You know, don't know me personally, but just assume because I'm not Desi and I don't have a massive beard, I can't be a Muslim. You know? How many times have I heard you don't look like a Muslim? So yeah, just remember. Yeah, Mahreen was very, she was a class act when she was dealing with the Muslims because they were saying horrible things and, you know, she you know she took it well. She took it well. And, you know, it's a huge, respons it's a huge responsibility, man. You know, you're away from your family for 10 days, you're on camera, you know. Um, it's, 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 people don't understand. Muslims are in the public eye. Honestly, the pressure's are very very strong you know it's a lot of pressure when um when you have to uh, deal with people and remember that you're a muslim <laughs> fancy abdul haqs abdul haq i don't know about that no comment <laughs> but you know who knows maybe she did you know and the thing is that just shows even somebody that isn't necessarily upon the sunnah if somebody who isn't necessarily you know your conviction can attract people to you who are the opposite of you you know if you are strong in your belief somebody who doesn't even be, believe in your beliefs can respect you and through that then begin to respect your beliefs you know if if you are really strong in your religion somebody can be like you know what for this religion to produce a person like this it must be a good religion and then, you know, they look into it. So there's always that. There's always that, you know. But yeah, they're they're good people though. They're all good people.
Yeah, Abdul Haq was very likable, man. Very, very likable guy. And a very funny guy as well. You know, him and I caught so much joke on that program that if they put the clips of me and Abdul Haq laughing together alone, you could make a one-hour episode or two, two, two episodes. It could have just been the adventures of... There's so many funny stories I could tell you about. Like when me and Abdul Haq went to one masjid. <laughs> me and him... <laughs> We went to a masjid. <laughs> I was like, please let nobody talk to this guy. Please let nobody talk to this guy. They were going to launch the masjid. Like, they were opening it. It was a beautiful masjid in York. I think uh, Reg, Sister Rejuana, I think it's her family that owns the uh, owns the masjid. But yeah, he he flipping. Um, <laughs> we went there and then the president of the masjid tells us that they're doing a fundraising thing. Yeah, they were doing a fundraising thing the next day and they said, okay, who's coming? And then the guy says that um, some guy, was it Lord something, Lord Sadiq or whatever. And, was, and I was like, oh God, please, Abdul Haq, shut up, Abdul Haq, shut up, Abdul Haq. Like, but he couldn't control himself. Did, 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 you, did, did you know that these people are Tahut? And... <laughs> And they must bow to the divine text because Islam does not recognize people with titles. And <laughs> the girl was like, they just come. I was like, but they're just coming to the event. No, I have to tell them and the hawk. I have to tell <laughs> And he gives this poor guy an earful for like 20 minutes. And the guy's just standing there smiling, saying, hey, Mashallah, brother. <laughs> It, it, it might not be funny to you, but honestly, if you were there, it was like, you could see, when, like, even when Farhan was saying he was gay, like, I could see the sparks in Abdul Haq's head just going, dzz, 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 dzz. <laughs> the guy told him, he said, Aki, he said he was gonna, he was looking for a wife. <laughs> What kind of boy was he looking for, man? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> man said I thought he was looking for a wife. <laughs> everybody and i knew who they were straight away i was like i saw money i was like he's the freshie because only a freshie would dress that way he spoke to me like hey i'm money yard i'm like yep i saw Mehreen, i thought eh, probably a fashionista i saw sabah i was like great the middle class white uh revert brilliant we've got one of those i thought the syrian brother was german i'm not gonna lie um I saw Humera. I was like, yeah, she's probably a feminist, judging by the way she's dressed. She looks like one of those mm, fight for my rights kind of sisters, you know. And then this guy comes up to me, hi, I'm Ferhan. <laughs> Which wife? Which wife is he looking for? Get out of here, man. <laughs> Yeah, real talk, you know, I think he might be, I think Abdul Haq might be autistic for real, if he didn't know. He was like, how was I supposed to know? I'm like, dude, the guy was dancing around, singing with like a makeshift hijab on his head. Like, <coughs> oh gosh, 
Oh Gott. <lacht> Sorry guys, honestly, it's just and then apparently the girls went to go and play a game called Is it Shag Maria Void or Snog Maria Void? And they were telling us about it later. They were telling us that they said when his name came up <laughs> Farhan said he'd marry him <laughs> He was like Yeah, I'd marry Abdul Haq We wouldn't even have to talk to each other We fight every day But I'd still be with him because I messed up like that <laughs> Sorry guys, sorry. Sorry, the laughter. I need to lie down after that, man. The laughter is killing me. <clears throat> man said he'd marry Abdul Haq. <sighs> that is, that's proof that opposites attract, innit? Oh, God. Anyway, guys, I need to go and prepare for my show and call my wife so yeah just look up the dates on our tour the muslim comedy tour um we've still got tomorrow i'm in leicester the day after that i'm in birmingham then swansea then cardiff so you know there's there's quite a few places buy your tickets we're raising money uh for syria and gaza Assalamu alaikum.